This is what the war in Sudan looks like on the ground. The rapid support forces released these pictures today, which they say show the prisoners they took after seizing an army barracks in Bahri in North Khartoum. And so they celebrated. These are the men who think they should be running the country. We're going to win, they shout. We're headed for victory. And pity the prisoners at their mercy. Another RSF public relations video. Don't be fooled by the automatic weapons. This is an attempt to reassure the people, to say the RSF doesn't kill civilians, they're just defending themselves. But whatever he says, every day there are more reports of arson, looting, murder and rape. Unfortunately, uh, we reported many uh, rape cases. Uh, and unfortunately, this is not representing all the, the numbers. Uh, the other issue, which is already um, we know, is those cases, they are managed to reach the hospital. So as I mentioned, the access to the hospital is very, very difficult. So we assume that this is like a, a few numbers, but we are expecting more cases. A brave citizen filmed this encounter. The desert fatigue suggests that these are members of the RSF. They rather fancied the white land cruiser driven by a couple who had presumably been trying to get food or water or to escape. Protest is futile. There is no law and order in Khartoum or the twin city of Omdurman. What's yours is theirs if they want it. Black smoke pours from the market in Omdurman. The RSF and common criminals had looted it thoroughly. It's not clear who set it alight. The army controls the skies, dropping bombs on the places the RSF controls, like the East Nile Hospital. The RSF was using it as a base, so the military saw it as a target, not a badly needed medical facility for the people of the capital. Destruction at the teaching hospital in El Janaina in the western region of Darfur, too. It was looted by the RSF in the last week of April. This was the only working hospital in the city where women brought their babies for health and nutrition checks. Here's the Médecins Sans Frontières logistics hub, utterly trashed. And the medical oxygen plant a gift of the United Nations Children's Fund. Last Sunday, shooting echoed through El Janaina. The Sudan Doctors' Union says at least 280 people were killed there over the weekend. Amongst them, 55-year-old electrical engineer Mohammed Haroun, who was at home with his family when militiamen arrived. <laughs> Our dad asked us to head outside to our neighbours, but in that moment, they came and entered the house. We could see. They dragged my dad outside and they shot him with a bullet. He died immediately. Then they burned the house. But before they burned the house down, they searched everywhere and stole our phones. Since the fighting started, the RSF and allied Arab militia have burnt camps where displaced people of the African Marcellate ethnic group were staying. Many of the Marcellate have fled over the border to Chad. But some of the men have stayed to reform their own militia and fight back. A return to the dark days of the conflict in Darfur two decades ago. As night falls, chaos is unleashed and Sudan slips further into the abyss.